Hello friends, my name is Mohammed Imran. I am a second year MBA student. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the Staphylococcus aureus. Basically, this is a quick, quick revision video for second year MBA students for professional exams. So let's start with the Staphylococcus aureus. It is gram positive cocci and uh, catalase and coagulase positive. It is facultative anaerobe, non-motile and non-sporing. These are the basics of Staph aureus that it is a gram positive cocci, catalase and coagulase positive, facultative anaerobe, non-motile and non-sporing. The viral sense factors of Staph aureus, we have cell wall factors, membrane active toxins and other toxins. So let's start with the cell wall factors. In cell wall factors, we have peptidoglycan, which confers cell rigidity to the bacteria. Second one is tycoic acid. Tycoic acid helps in the addition to mucosal surface and it also prevents the opsonization. The third one is the most important one that is clumping factor or bound coagulase. Because of this factor, we are going to see the slight coagulase positive reaction and the fourth one is protein A. The protein A has various function like it is antiphagocytic, anti-complementary and chemotactic. It is the basis of co-agglutination reaction. So we have to remember these points that clumping and bound coagulase factor is responsible for slight coagulase reaction and protein A is responsible for the co-agglutination reaction. Now coming to the membrane active toxins. We have two types of membrane active toxins. First one is hemolysins and the second one is leukocidins, Panton valentine toxin, PV toxin. So in hemolysins, we have alpha hemolysin, beta, gamma and delta. We would study this in later. And now coming to the leukocidins, that is PV toxin, Panton valentine toxin. We have two components, FNS. It damages PMN and macrophages associated with community associated MRSA that is methicillin resistant staph aureus and one more important point that is synergo hymenotropic toxin in synergo hymenotropic toxin it has two components the first component is gamma hemolysin and the second one is pv toxin now coming to the hemolysins we have the alpha hemolysin which is inactivated at 70 degrees celsius and reactivated paradoxically at 100 degrees celsius it is also leukocidal and cytotoxic now coming to beta hemolysin sphingomyelinase it is a hydrolase enzyme and it lyses sheep rbc but not human or rabbit rbc and the most important point here is it exhibits hot cold phenomena the gamma hemolysin lyses sheep rabbit and human rbc same for delta hemolysin that is it lyses sheep rabbit and human rbc whereas in beta hemolysis it lyses only sheep rbc but not human or rabbit rbc now coming to the other toxins the first one is epidermolytic toxin it is also called exofoliative toxin because of this toxin we are going to see Ritter's disease pemphigus neonatorum toxic epidermal necrolysis and bullous impetigo this toxin is going to cause Ritter's disease pemphigus neonatorum toxic epidermal necrolysis and bullous impetigo now coming to the second toxin that is enterotoxin the enterotoxin is the reason for food poisoning the important point here is incubatory period is one to six hours we have to remember this incubatory period that is one to six hours it stimulates vagus nerve and vomiting center of brain the second most important point regarding enterotoxin is it is heat stable now coming to toxic shock syndrome toxin that is tsst is gonna cause toxic shock syndrome and uh, the points regarding tsst is phage group 1 the risk factors uh, is the use of vaginal tampon by menstruating fe uh, females and the manifestations of toxic shock syndrome is rash fever multi organ failure the diagnosis of toxic shock syndrome toxin is by latex agglutination test or by enzyme immunoassay the treatment for toxic shock syndrome is clindamycin now coming to the diseases caused by Staph aureus, which is a very lengthy list of diseases caused by Staph aureus. We can remember this by Kent Top BSC, that is Bombay Stock Exchange. We can remember Bombay Stock Exchange here and uh, you can remember the Staph aureus as a stock. Now coming to the mnemonic that is Kent Top BSC. For C, we are going to see catheter and center line associated bloodstream infection. This is one of the most important point here that Staph aureus is going to cause catheter and center line associated bloodstream infection. The second one is A. Uh, A is abscess. You can see sauce and epidural abscess. And uh, N, necrotizing pneumonia and necrotizing fasciitis. Both are important because these are associated with CAMRSA that is community as a, uh, associated methicillin resistant staph aureus now coming to t 
toxin mediated diseases like toxic shock syndrome food poisoning is by endotoxin and tropical pyomyositis for t toxin mediated diseases and tropical pyomyositis o for osteomyelitis and p for pyomyositis post operative parotitis peronchia and post viral pneumonia and b for botryomycosis mycetoma like condition and it seems like a fungal infection but it's basically a staph aureus infection and s is the most important one that is skin and soft tissue infections septic arthritis surgical wound tissue infection and the skin and soft tissue infection like folliculitis furuncule carbuncule impetigo and cellulitis and e for endocarditis this mnemonic covers basically every disease of staph aureus moving on to the laboratory diagnosis of staph aureus in direct smear microscopy we are going to see pus cells and gram positive cocaine cluster as you can see here the cluster form like grapes and the in culture in nutrient agar we are going to see golden yellow colonies as you can clearly see in this image the golden yellow colonies because of beta carotene and in blood agar we are going to see colonies with narrow zone oxidative fermentation beta hemolysis as you can see here in this image beta hemolysis now coming to the selective media we are going to remember three selective media the first one is the mannitol salt agar mannitol salt agar we are going to see yellow colonies due to mannitol fermentation as you can clearly see in this image and the second one is salt milk agar third one is ludlum's medium you have to remember three selective media first one is mannitol salt agar yellow colonies due to mannitol fermentation the second one is salt milk agar third one is ludlum's medium and in biochemical identification we already know that it is catalase positive now coming to the test differentiating staph aureus from coagulase negative staph epidermidis or staph saprophyticus we have two coagulase negative organism uh, that is staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus the most important point regarding staph epidermidis is biofilm production and uh, we are going to see this staph epidermidis in implanted foreign bodies like valvular shunts and prosthetic devices and staph staph saprophyticus is going to cause uti in young females now coming to the test that it is coagulase positive heat stable thermonuclease positive dna is test positive phosphatase positive mannitol sugar is fermented we are going to see yellow colonies and black colored colonies on potassium telluride occur and protein a detection the test differentiating staph aureus from coagulase negative organisms like coagulase positive heat stable thermonuclease positive dna test positive phosphatase positive mannitol sugar is fermented yellow colonies and black colored colonies on potassium telluride occur and protein a detection now coming to the difference between tube coagulase and slide coagulase the tube coagulase is because of coagulase enzyme and slight coagulase is due to clumping factor as we have studied in the virulence factors cell wall factors and uh, tube coagulase requires crf in plasma that is coagulase reacting factor in plasma and slight coagulase does not require crf in plasma and the next point is basic that it is done in tube and it is done in slide and the test positive coagulum is formed and plasma clotted and test positive clumps are formed because of clumping factor in tube coagulase we are going to see coagulum and in slight coagulase we are going to see clumps and staph look dunensis is negative staph look dunensis is negative and schlieferi is positive opposite for slide coagulase that staph look dunensis is positive and staph schlieferi is negative and the other coagulase positive species both tube and slide positive that is tube and slide positive is staph hicus and staph intermedius and the staph aureus is both tube coagulase and slide coagulase positive in this video we are not going to focus on the treatment portion of staph aureus infection we would study the drug resistance in staph aureus if there is a drug resistance to beta lactam antibiotics is because of two reasons the first one is production of beta lactamase enzyme the beta lactamase enzyme is plasmid coated so it can be transferred to other bacteria by transduction and uh, the second one is because of alteration of pvp to pvp 2a pvp is penicillin binding protein and uh, because of this alteration of pvp to pvp 2a we are going to see mrsa that is methicillin resistant staph aureus and it is mediated by mac gene you have to remember this gene that is mac gene and uh, this alteration of pvp to pvp 2a is chromosomally mediated whereas uh, the beta lactamase enzyme is plasmid coded so it can be passed down by transduction and uh, 
now we are going to study the difference between ca mrsa and ha mrsa ca mrsa is community associated mrsa that is methicillin resistant staph aureus and ha mrsa is hospital acquired mrsa that is methicillin resistant staph aureus and the ca mrsa is because of mek 456 opposite that is mek 123 is because of ha mrsa and uh, more virulent because of production of pv toxin and this is less virulent and ha mrsa we can get rid of ha mrsa by washing our hands regularly in hospital and uh, the ca mrsa is more severe causes more severe infection like necrotizing fasciitis now coming to the detection of MRSA, the MRSA can be detected by antimicrobial susceptibility test that is disc diffusion test. You have to remember this disc diffusion test and we can do this disc diffusion test with sifosetin disc or oxacillin disc. The best one is sifosetin discs and we can also detect MRSA by oxacillin screen agar or by PCR we can detect the MEK A gene and by latex agglutination test we can detect PBP 2A that is penicillin binding protein 2A. So we have completed the staph aureus microbiology portion. Thank you for watching. Hope you like this video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more videos related to medical field.